Okay, so we're going to talk about the demographic transition model. Um, this was a model that was created in around right about the 1920s, uh, and it just basically looks at what would happen for a country's population as it starts to develop and progress. So, hypothetically speaking, you could put any country um, on the model at some point because uh, of the situation that they are in. Uh, so we're going to have a look at some examples of countries, we're going to see how population pyramids fit into this as well, uh, and we're just going to start to take the demographic transition model uh, and use it a little bit more so we've got a better understanding of how we can actually go about using a model like this when we're explaining or describing uh, the development of different countries. A few main points that you probably need to note uh, is this line represents the total population, you have the death rate and you have the birth rate. Uh, this section between uh, stage 2 and stage 3, so the early expanding and the late expanding, where we've got natural increase is going to become quite important later on. The demographic transition model also links in relatively nicely with uh, some of the population pyramids that we have seen and, and will see. Um, so you can link some of these population pyramids to different stages. It isn't perfect, it's not a perfect fit, and we're going to go into some of the reasons why it's not a perfect fit uh, as, we, as we get further into the course. But uh, if we look at some of these sections first of all, you can roughly equate uh, this to stage one, um, where you have got uh, a high birth rate and a high death rate as well. So that is noted on there. You can see that there is a high birth rate because the bottom is very wide and there's a high death rate because it goes in very, very quickly. Um, these black lines along here represent the children, working age population and elderly people. So over 65, so that's roughly what this represents. Uh, you can also see that more or less stage 2 sort of fits into here where you've still got a high birth rate, but the death rate has decreased. So consequently, you can tell that because the sides are more stable. Um, this roughly equates to stage 3, where the, the birth rate starts to drop off, but the death rate remains uh, fairly low. Well, it is still low and remains low. Uh, and then lastly, you can more or less link this into stage 4, where you've got a declining birth rate, um, and the population becomes relatively stable. So that's more or less what you can see. It doesn't fit perfectly, as you'll probably notice, but nevertheless, uh, as a rough approximation, that's about right. So stage one of the demographic transition model um, has, is characterised by a high birth rate and a high death rate. We don't really have many nations or nation states that... Um, actually have this anymore in stage one. It, it's not really nations that are involved in this. This is more remote Amazonian tribes or, uh, not necessarily Amazonian, but remote tribes. Um, a, a lot of the time there is disease, there's some famine, quite poor medical knowledge, a lot of children will die, uh, so the death rate remains quite high and obviously medical care is difficult in these sort of uh, remote regions. Uh, so that keeps the death rate quite quite high. But as there is a need for uh, lots of children for farming or perhaps a need uh, or a lack of knowledge of contraception, there isn't really any family planning. It could be a religious reason or a social reason, as we've discussed in a previous video. That keeps the birth rate quite high. Uh, and consequently, that's why you've got a high birth rate, a high death rate. But generally speaking, at the times when most of the co um, countries were going through this stage, the population was quite low. Many regions that are in stage one of the DTM will have a lack of clean water, which keeps the death rate quite high as well. Um, so take into account those type of things. This is stage two of the demographic transition model, uh, and this is where we have our early expanding section. So the death rate is starting to decrease. Um, some of the reasons for the death rate falling, so we have a, a somewhat rapidly falling death rate in many ways, uh, is because you start to get improved medicine, improved water quality, better quality food, much more sanitation and, and more available sanitation. All of these things prevent disease 
um, allow the treatment of disease so consequently you have a, a, a much better quality uh, of life and it means that the death rate falls. Now the birth rate can stay quite high. There's still a lack of birth control. Culturally people are still having lots of children in uh, countries like this so culturally it uh, it might even mean that children work on farms or uh, are asked to work with the family. Um, there's still going to be uh, a slight lack of knowledge of family planning, and so consequently the birth rate remains high. Uh, some examples of countries where this occurs, we have uh, Bangladesh, Angola, uh, Mali and Niger. So all these sorts of countries are um, the types of countries that are in stage 2, this early expanding section. Don't forget, and importantly, the difference between birth rate and death rate creates natural increase or decrease, and in this case you've got natural increase, quite a rapid increase, uh, so hence early expanding. In the late expanding section, uh, this is when we start to see a little bit more of a change. Uh, countries are starting to become more developed uh, economically, socially, uh, politically more developed. So consequently, countries like uh, Mexico, Brazil and India who are um, much more developed than people in stage 2, than countries in stage 2, the birth rate will actually start to fall. Now the death rate is still falling. This is basically due to continuing improvement in sanitation, food, food quality, diet, um, general levels of medicine and care so there is an improvement in that so this continues to fall now the birth rate will start falling because actually there's starting to be a little bit more social change with development uh, women tend to stay in education for longer they get married later so they delay having children so consequently le they have less children there's much more birth care and birth control available uh, so people tend to have fewer children Another reason is the fact that children tend to survive longer because the death rate has fallen. People then decide that the children don't have to contribute to the family income. They can go to school. There's more money available uh, and more children will survive. There's a lower infant mortality rate, so people start to have less children. Uh, the rate of natural increase is still very, very high because there's a difference between the death rate and birth rate is still high but it's not as uh, rapidly expanding uh, as the early expanding section. Nevertheless, it is still growing. We're into stage four of the demographic transition model. So when we're looking at stage four, we start to have a low death rate. This is because we've now got high standards of medical care. These are developed countries that we're referring to, so Denmark... Um, in the United States. This is stage four of the demographic transition model. Um, it starts to become much more clear uh, that the development has allowed people to have excellent quality sanitation, uh, much more healthy lifestyles, an emphasis on exercise, so the health is generally better in nations like this. Uh, the death rate will also be low um, for these reasons. The birth rate starts to become very, very low, uh, because of the high cost of bringing up children. Uh, a lot of people will choose careers over having children um, and there's excellent access to birth control and good education to back that up. So consequently, people have much less children. So the birth rate is low, the death rate is low, so the rate of natural increase is very low or even stable for, for, for the most part. Once we get to stage five of the demographic transition model, this is the point when... Uh, we start to have um, a decrease in the population. So we get a decrease in the population. There's not many countries that have actually reached stage 5, um, Japan and Germany being the two obvious examples that have actually reached stage 5. Uh, basically, the death rate will outstrip the birth rate uh, in many reasons because the birth rate remains very, very low because of lifestyle changes. And that actually gives you an ageing population. Because you've got an ageing population, people will die eventually. They can't live forever, uh, so they do die eventually. And it tends to mean that the elderly people will start uh, to die, but there's not the younger people to replace them in terms of numbers. So the population uh, will actually start to fall. 
There are a few things you'll probably notice about the demographic transition model, or the main drawback of it, is that this doesn't take into account migration, um, which can change the population structure of a country. So that's the main drawback of uh, the dem demographic transition model. It only really takes into account birth rate and death rate within a country, not necessarily migration. Uh, if migration is very high, it's often younger people that migrate, and they are of an age where they, they contribute to the birth rate. Um, so that can change the structure, but that's the only drawback to it.